Today's topic is U.S. immigration now requires social media details from all visa applicants. U.S. immigration has just implemented another hurdle for prospective immigrants and visitors to the USA to jump. This is in line with the 2017 executive orders issued by President Trump to institute extreme vetting to vigorously screen visa applicants. Effective May 31, 2019, the State Department's applications used for non-immigrant visas, the DS-160, and used for immigrant visas, the DS-260, they have been modified to require that all applicants reveal the social media accounts that they use. It's important that you know about and understand these changes and how to deal with them, because now, more than ever, there are more ways to trip yourself up during the application process that might well lead to denial. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about what is going on, what social media sites so far are identified in this process, and what additional and probably higher hurdles that will probably be added in the future. And please watch to the end of this video because towards the end, I will teach you how to best deal with this new requirement. I am Fred Wall, the Visa Coach, and I help you smoothly get through a confusing and frustrating process so that you can have a happy life together in the USA with your foreign partner. Now, let's talk about how US immigration now requires social media details from all visa applicants. Soon after his inauguration, President Trump issued executive orders tightening how U.S. immigration treats its foreign clients. Executive orders were issued, well, to ban applicants from so-called terrorist countries, and U.S. immigration was ordered to conduct extreme vetting on all cases. And a year after this initial executive order, it was announced that public social media accounts would start being mined for information on applicants. And soon after that announcement about data mining was made, a few of my fiance and spouse visa applicants, especially those from Northern Africa, were, after a positive visa interview at the consulate, well, they were told that their cases were on administrative processing pending a review of their social media, communications, and travel histories. The fiancé or spouse, disappointed, well, to be put on hold, was given additional forms to take away and fill in. And these required the applicant to reveal information about his or her social media use, cell phone numbers, travel history, and so on. Often, many months after submission of this information, they finally got their visas. Now, apparently, now the data miners have, well, finished developing their system to review and vet, well, the information and are now ready to roll it out for all visa applicants, not only a select few. The Department of State forms now include drop-down menus that ask you to identify if you've used the following social media platforms, and if so, to provide usernames. So, ask.fm, Duban, Facebook, Flickr, Google+, Instagram, LinkedIn, MySpace, Pinterest, Ozone, QQ, Reddit, Sino Weibo, Tencent Weibo, Tumblr, Twitter, Tuo, Vine, Von Contact, U2, and YouTube. Wow. Now expect that this work, is, this list is a work in progress and will be expanded later. And so far, your passport is not requested. However, asking for passport passwords has been proposed and might be required in the future. Now the official purpose of this social media scrutiny is to weed out terrorists because social media has been viewed as a major forum for terrorist sentiment, recruitment, and activity. And this sentiment con connectivity is often apparent via social postings. So common belief is that if this system had been in place that the 2015 terrorist event resulting in the death of 14 and wounding 22 at a San Bernardino 
California office holiday party by Syed Farouk and Tashfin Malik would have been prevented. Tashfin Malik had been granted a K-1 fiance visa to enter the USA. And on a review of her social media presence after the fact, experts believe that the warning signs were all plainly visible. And if only the counselor officers had looked for them. Now, I certainly don't believe that you or any of my clients could be a potential terrorist. But you still should be aware that the data mining of your social media presence will also affect non-terrorists. I expect that the data miners will be also looking for any signs of inconsistency between the story told in applying for the visa compared to the, well, approved purpose of the visa being applied for. For example, a person who is planning to come in on a visitor visa may have mentioned on social media his or her plans to work in the USA while visiting or revealed the goal of, I'm never going to return home. I'm going to stay in the USA. Or a sponsor of a spouse visa who's posting showing his current social life, well, does not reflect that of a married person. He's acting single. Or the applicant for a green card who's posting show involvement in criminal activity. You know, maybe he's posting what he, what, <laughs> you know how it is. Some criminals do post odd things. Anyway, U.S. immigration will be on the lookout for whatever they can find. And you don't have to fall into the above black and white categories to run into trouble. Remember, a counselor officer is better off to deny an honest couple than to approve a fraudulent couple. Approval of a fraudulent case, well, will hurt his reputation. But denial of an honest case won't affect his reputation. And while the honest couple is certainly inconvenienced, they can always reapply and eventually get their visa. Now, what higher hurdles are next? Well, at the moment, they're just asking what social media platforms you use and what name you use while on it. This information allows them to view the, well, the same information that is available to the public. But proposals for the future are to require or to, and to reveal, say, cell phone numbers, all the cell phone numbers you've used, and all email addresses. And eventually, you might be required to provide passwords to all your accounts. Now, once that happens, not only your public presence would be inspected, but your private as well. Another troubling proposal that has been tabled will require all applicants for visas and even foreign travelers arriving at U.S. ports of entry to turn over their cell phones and laptops for immediate and direct inspection of their communications and posting history. Imagine how slow the lines at the airport will start to move. Now, what can you do to protect yourself? Well, number one, make an inventory of the social media accounts that you use and prepare an accurate list to provide to immigration if and when asked. Number two, bring each account up to date with your current romantic situation so that it is consistent with the immigration benefit that you are applying for. For example, if you're applying for a fiancé or spouse visa, well, update your relationship status. Post engagement or wedding announcements. Forecast your plans for a honeymoon and a happy life together in the USA. If applying for a visitor or student visa, well, post your interests for what you will see and do in the USA. Okay? Make sure that all postings are consistent with what you are allowed to do based upon the visa you hope to get. And number three, clean house. If previously you posted items that, well, could be found objectionable or controversial or paints you in a different light than you want to be seen today, just take them down. This was Fred Wall, the visa coach. Now, if you haven't done so already, please, well, subscribe to this channel. And this helps others just like you to find, find us. And then like or add your comments to this video. And please go to visacoach.com and sign up for the Visa Coach 
monthly newsletter. Each month it is full of tips and advice on marriage-based immigration. And it's free of charge. And when you sign up, you'll get two free ebooks I have written. 120 K-1 interview practice questions and five things you must know before starting on your visa. Finally, when you are ready to get started, well, call me for your complimentary case evaluation and speak with me directly. If you are considering hiring Visa Coach to personally guide you through your immigration adventure, join him for a complimentary case evaluation. He listens to you to learn the red flags and strengths of your case, your eligibility and goals. He suggests which visa is right for you, the best strategy to get it, and how soon your partner can join you. To learn more about Visa Coach's services and how he can help you, book your free case evaluation today.